Susan, you have to see this. I got it. I really got it. What is it? It's this. Don't you already have this? No, no, this is new. Hold on, I'll show you. This is the one I had before. They're the same. They're not the same. This one has a shovel. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and it is the five year anniversary of the channel. It is with great pride that I can also announce this channel has surpassed 8,000 subscribers. I can only thank all of you for this channel's success. The viewers have made it happen. They have stepped up, they have helped and supported me. They deserve all the credit. If you clicked on this video to see a G.I. Joe review, you will get that. But I also need to comment on what the fans mean to G.I. Joe. Right now, we are G.I. Joe. The fans have kept the love alive. I invited everyone who watches this channel to participate in the five-year celebration. At the end of this video, I will play all the messages I received. Thank you all. Thanks for what you've done for me, and thanks for what you've done for G.I. Joe. For this review, I chose a rare G.I. Joe toy. It fits with the theme this year, and it has a special meaning to me. It's not a toy I had as a child. I didn't even know about it until I was an adult collector. I discovered this toy by watching another YouTube creator, ForMBX257. At the time, I was alone, depressed, essentially homeless, crashing at a friend's house until I figured out what I was going to do with my life. In desperation to calm my mind, I searched YouTube to see if anyone was talking about G.I. Joe. I found Kevin, ForMBX257, and I watched all of his videos. I saw all the toys I loved as a child, and I learned about toys that I never knew about. One of them was the Sears exclusive Vamp HAL 2-Pack. It was a variation of a toy I loved as a kid, and it was very rare. It seemed unattainable. This year, I got it, and not only did I I get it, I also got a lesser known variation of that vamp. There's nothing special about owning old plastic. There's nothing admirable about buying things. What makes this special is that it completes a mission that started on that terrible day when I needed something to lift me up and I found FormBX257. HCC 788 presents the Sears exclusive vamp and howl. This is the 1984 Sears exclusive Vamp and Hal. This two pack of vehicles was sold only in 1984 and only at Sears stores. They were advertised in Sears catalogs. The Sears release of the Vamp and the Hal did not include action figures, even though the standard retail releases did. The regular retail release of the Vamp included Clutch, and the regular release of the Hal included Grand Slam. Just looking at the outside of the box, this set looks like a straight reissue of the old vehicles. Kids may not have been enticed to buy toys they already had. Even if a kid didn't already have these vehicles, there was a lot of new and exciting stuff in 1984. I could see a lot of kids passing on this set in favor of some of the other great vehicles released that year. In the case of the HAL, it was a straight reissue of the retail 
retail version. No differences between the retail HAL and the Sears HAL have been identified. The Vamp, on the other hand, was another story. Kids who picked up this set would have a variation of the Vamp that would become rare and sought after. We actually have two variations of the Sears Vamp to look at in this video. Before the launch of the G.I. Joe, a real American hero line in 1982, Sears had a history of releasing exclusive G.I. Joe toys. Sears has been selling exclusive G.I. Joe toys since the late 1960s. In 1969, Sears released a special version of the G.I. Joe space capsule. In 1970, they released the Super Adventure set. There are other exclusive Sears G.I. Joe toys in the 12-inch era. Hasbro and Sears apparently had a close relationship. That relationship continued into the Real American Hero era. Creating exclusives for retailers usually involves reissued product, but most of the time they will change the color to distinguish it from the standard release. They didn't bother to do that with this set. The first Real American Hero Sears exclusive started in 1982, with the Cobra Missile Command headquarters. It was a very simple cardboard playset that included the only three Cobra action figures available at that time. The next Sears exclusive was the 1984 Vamp and HAL, the set we're looking at in this review. The 1982 Cobra Headquarters Command Center was also sold in 1983, but there was no new Sears exclusive for 1983. In 1985, there were two Sears exclusive of G.I. Joe releases. There was the Crimson Attack Tank and the SMS, both Cobra vehicles. Sears released more Cobra-related sets than G.I. Joe. In 1986, Sears had another two exclusive G.I. Joe releases, the Dreadnought Air Assault and the Dreadnought Ground Assault. I do not have those two sets to show you. And that was about it for Sears. Later G.I. Joe exclusives mostly went to Toys R Us and Target. Let's focus on the Vamp right now. We'll take a closer look at the HAL a little later. The Vamp is based loosely on a couple real-world vehicles, the Lamborghini Cheetah and the FMC XR311, both prototype vehicles from the 1970s that never saw full production. The designer for the Vamp for Hasbro was Wayne Luther. Early design drawings of the Vamp looked more like the Cheetah. Some features were cut and the vehicle was downsized, before production. Pre-production artwork refers to the Vamp as the FMC XR or the XR311 Jeep. The first release of the Vamp was in 1982. It was re-released in 1983. There is no difference between the 82 and the 83 Vamps, except the 83 Vamp came with the swivel arm version of the driver, Clutch. This 1982 Vamp is the original, and it is the baseline by which all variations are measured. In 1984, we got the Vamp Mark II, an updated version of the Vamp in a desert brown color, and it had the second version of the clutch action figure. That same year, in 1984, we got the Cobra Stinger, a black Cobra version of that classic G.I. Joe vehicle, looking great in black, by the way. The Cobra Stinger came with an action figure, the Stinger Driver. Since the Sears exclusive Vamp was also released in 1984, the Vamp was available in three different flavors that year. In 1986, there was the Sears exclusive Dreadnought Ground Assault four-wheel drive vehicle. Unfortunately, I don't have that one to show you. That was a recolored reissue of the Stinger. In 1988, we got the Mail-Away Vamp Mark II. It was advertised as being basically the same vehicle as the 1984 Vamp Mark II, but kids who mailed away for this vehicle got something very different. The color was drastically different from the retail release, and it had a lot of features from the original Vamp. Please note the Vamp Mark II I have here is not complete. It did have the doors, the roof, and the missile box, like the retail release. In 1989, we got the Tiger Force Tiger Sting. Obviously, the colors are a lot different, but it has a lot of the same features as the Vamp Mark II, but not all of the same features. It's another hybrid between the Vamp and the Vamp 
Vamp Mark II. It's actually pretty close to the Mail Away Vamp, except for the colors. Let's take a look at the points of variation among the green vamps. Again, using the original vamp release as a baseline, we can see how the Sears releases are different. And again, I have two variations of that Sears release. The first thing you're going to look for is the shovel on the hood. The original vamp did not have a shovel on the hood, and the Sears release did. But there is a Sears vamp without the shovel on the hood. It would be very easy to mistake this for a regular retail release. But the no shovel variant does have the other points of difference, so you can still distinguish it from the regular retail release. The Sears vamp has these notches on the pillars for the roll cage. They're very small, they'd be very easy to miss. But the retail vamp did not have those. So that is something to keep an eye on. Those notches come from the 1984 Vamp Mark II, and they act as stoppers for the hinges on the doors. Of course, the Sears Vamp did not come with doors, but it still has the notches. Those little notches can help you distinguish the non-shovel variant of the Sears Vamp from the regular retail release. It will still have those notches. The regular retail release will not. For the final variation, we've got to look at the underside. The original retail release vamp will say Hasbro Industries Inc. Copyright 1982. On the Sears exclusive vamp on the underside it will say Hasbro Industries Inc. Copyright 1984. And yes the no shovel variant also has that 1984 date stamp on the bottom. The Sears version of the Vamp is a hybrid of the original 1982 Vamp and the Vamp Mark II. It has features from both. It is not just a green version of the Mark II body. It has the gun on the hood and the rack for the gas cans in the back, not the pegs. It seems like they had to push this exclusive out when they were still working on updates for the mold. It looks like a work in progress. All the Sears vamps that I've been able to find have the original 1982 vamp dashboard and steering wheel. There are allegedly some that have the Stinger or Vamp Mark II dashboard and steering wheel. I haven't been able to get my hands on that variant and Yojo.com does not list it. For something like that, I would be concerned that someone has married a Sears Vamp body with a Mark II or Stinger chassis. If you run across this one, check for signs of tampering. If it can be verified that a Vamp with an updated dashboard actually came out of the Sears Vamp HAL box, then it may be a legitimate variation. I just can't confirm it. Let's look at the parts and the features of the Vamp, and overall it has a light green color offset with dark gray. I like the color. Even though it's green, like all other vehicles from 1982, the lighter color helps it stand out. It provides a nice contrast with the darker green of the HAL. In the front we have a couple sticker headlights, a dark gray bumper and a brush bar, and a molded in non-functional winch. On the hood of course we have that all-important shovel. It's strange that a shovel could look so beautiful but for a collector, it looks like gold. The shovel was an innovation for 1984. None of the earlier vamps had it. But the Vamp Mark II had the shovel, as did the Stinger. After that, most Vamp releases used the mold with the shovel, but not all. A few went back to the old 1982 no shovel mold. Vamp releases with the shovel included the Vamp Mark II, the Stinger, the Sears Vamp, of course, and the Sears Dreadnought ground assault vehicle. The Vamps without the shovel, and again we're talking about 1984 and later, include the Sears Vamp variant, the Mail Away Vamp Mark II, and the Tiger Force Tiger Sting. There is more on the hood than the shovel. There is also this little machine gun looking thing. It is not identified on the blueprints, but it looks like a little bit of extra armament for the Vamp. It has four wheels. They are plastic. They are dark gray with green hubcaps. Uh, they turn pretty well, uh, pretty easily, but the front wheels do not steer. The two front wheels and the two back wheels 
wheels are connected with metal dowel axles. Those metal axles are very strong and it makes the Vamp a very tough vehicle. The underside is mostly hollow, but it does have the all important date stamp. Make sure you turn over all your Vamps and look on the underside. Next we have the roll cage. It has a couple angled pillars and some bars across the top. And this can be a weak point. It tends to break on all four of the points where it connects to the main body of the vehicle. So do be cautious about that. Now the Sears Vamp did not come with clutch, but I'm going to borrow clutch for a moment uh, so I can demonstrate putting a figure in the vehicle and also show you something that is a problem with all versions of the Vamp. Uh, this crossbar on the roll cage is too low. It actually goes right across the eyes of the driver. It makes the vehicle feel a little undersized for these figures. That crossbar does have a rear view mirror. That's a nice touch. No side mirrors though. The inside of the cab is dark gray. We have two seats with a center console and a gear shift and a pretty plain dashboard. There is some nice technical detail in the section behind the seats. On that dashboard is a green steering wheel. It does not turn, but it is removable. And because it is removable, it is a frequently missing part. The column for the steering wheel is keyed, so it only goes in one way. Once it goes in, it does stay in fairly well. I don't think the steering wheel gets in the way of the action figure, so I would just leave it in. Don't risk losing it. I do like that technical detail behind the driver, and there is a small rear window. Uh, there's no clear plastic on any of this. The cab is entirely open. Who should drive this special vamp? The box art shows Rakondo driving with Mutt riding shotgun, and those choices are as good as any, I guess. But I put it to you, if clutch is not an option, who is your go-to vamp driver? Moving to the back, we have the main armament for the vamp, this gun turret. The blueprints call this gun a machine gun 7.62 millimeter computer synchronized. It is on a small green turret. The gun itself is dark gray. It can rotate all the way around 360 degrees and it can elevate and has quite good elevation so it could be used for anti-aircraft. The machine gun itself has some nice detail. It's in a dark gray. On the starboard side of the machine gun there is this tab and by moving this tab forward and back the barrels move with it. Uh, so this simulates alternating recoil. Fans have wondered how this gun is operated. The only way to control it is from inside the cab. There are no controls directly on the gun. There is no platform or seat for a gun operator in the back, so it must be controlled from the driver's or passenger seat. In the G.I. Joe comic book in issue number seven, Clutch reveals he has a remote control for the gun turret. In the very back we have a couple tail lights, and we have a rack that holds two gas cans. Each gas this can has a unique sticker, so there's can number one and can number two. This is all exactly the same as the retail vamp. The gas cans are hollow. There is no bottom on them. Uh, and they have a handle. Uh, the handle actually can fit fairly easily in an action figure's hand without stressing the thumbs too much. So the action figure can carry the gasoline can. Take a note of the difference in the cans on this vamp and the regular retail vamp with the vamp mark II. Uh, this one has a rack and the two cans cans rest in there. The Vamp Mark II has cans that are on pegs that go in holes on the back of the vehicle. Uh, that's why I'm saying this is not just a green version of the Vamp Mark II mold. There are differences. What I wish the Vamp had is a troop carrying platform like the Stinger. This would have allowed for a gunner in the back and the Vamp could have carried one or two more figures. This would have been more functional than and a couple gas cans. And finally, we have a universal tow hitch. Of course, the Vamp would need one to tow the HAL. Now let's look at the HAL. H-A-L stands for Heavy Artillery Laser. It may also be a reference to HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey. The HAL was one of two towed weapons in 1982. The other one was the MMS. Both of the 1982 towed weapons came Came with action figures, the MMS came with Hawk, and the HAL came with Grand Slam. There was another smaller gun
gun emplacement from 1982, the Flak. The Flak did not include an action figure, and it didn't have wheels, so it couldn't be towed. The closest Cobra equivalent would be the 1984 Cobra Asp. The Asp was a towable cannon like the HAL, and it was in that classic Cobra blue. Some fans have pointed out the oddity of referring to a laser as artillery. We tend to think of artillery as a shell-firing gun that lobs a projectile at a ballistic trajectory on the enemy. That's generally how conventional artillery works. The word artillery just refers to a large caliber gun with a range longer than infantry small arms. In earlier usages of the word, artillery was more or less synonymous with cannon. The HAL, a cannon with two large laser barrels and long range, qualifies as artillery in the broadest sense of the word. As a towed weapon, the HAL was less popular than some other vehicles in 1982. It isn't self-powered, it's only mobile in conjunction with another vehicle. It can be towed by the VAMP and the MOBAT, the motorized battle tank. That being the case, it's convenient for the HAL to come with its own transportation. The original HAL was stationary unless you bought another toy to go with it. The original release of the HAL in 1982 came with Grand Slam, that would have been the straight arm version of Grand Slam. When it was re-released in 1983, it had the swivel arm version of Grand Slam with updated articulation. And of course, also in 1983, there was another version of Grand Slam that came with the jump jetpack. The Sears release of the HAL came with no action figures. Unlike the Vamp, there does not seem to be any variation between the Sears HAL and the regular retail release. Let's take a look at the parts and the features of the HAL. Overall, it is a dark green color. It's a very nice pseudo-military look for a science fiction weapon. If a real G.I. Joe team were to have lasers, they would look like this. They would look like military weapons. In the front we have the barrel tips. There are two barrels, and this is a frequent break point. These barrel tips can be a bit fragile and do tend to break frequently. There is a lot of great technical detail all over the main body of the HAL. Uh, it is really nice looking, really excellent detail, and all of it looks great in that dark green. Following all that exceptional detail all the way down the main body of the laser cannon, uh, and in the back it has some vents. There are some kill marks on the side of the cannon, looks like aircraft, so that does hint at an anti-aircraft role for the HAL. Artillery can be used for anti-aircraft, so the HAL can still be artillery if it is an anti-aircraft gun. On the starboard side of the HAL there is the control seat. The seat itself is brown. There is a stair step up to the control platform, that's a nice touch, and there is a foot peg on the floorboard. I don't usually use that. It's at kind of an awkward position for the figure, uh, and I don't think you necessarily need it. On the main body of the cannon, there is a control stick for the operator. Even though this HAL did not come with Grand Slam, I'm going to borrow Grand Slam so I can demonstrate how to put a figure in the seat. Uh, just bend his knees and place him in. Uh, no back peg. Uh, there is that foot peg, but like I said, it's at an awkward placement for the figure to actually use. Um, he does stay in, but maybe not as securely as he could, uh, with some extra support, maybe from a back peg. There is a computer control screen in front of the seat. It is in brown plastic. Uh, that brown does provide a bit of color variation against that dark green. There is a sticker on the screen, and it looks like the HAL is targeting a red airplane. Uh, that does confirm its anti-aircraft role. This operating station provides no protection for the gunner at all. But the HAL may not be a frontline weapon, so that may not necessarily be a problem. Since the HAL is a cannon, it can move like a cannon. It's mounted on this ring uh, that can rotate 360 degrees. It can also elevate with a ratchet, and that ratchet is accomplished with a flat metal piece inside the body of the HAL that runs across teeth. And when the HAL elevates, it makes a sickening sound that sounds exactly like plastic breaking.
I'm not a big fan of that ratcheting sound. I do feel like I'm going to break the toy every time I move it. It's not quite so bad moving down, but moving it up, makes a terrible, terrible noise. The Howl stands on three legs. This is its emplacement mode. It has two long front legs that swing out and one back leg that holds the wheels up off the ground. The wheels are dark gray and really nice. They are connected with a metal dowel axle similar to the Vamp, so they're very sturdy, uh, really nice looking wheels. There are no exposed mushroom clips like what you got on 90s vehicles. These wheels appear to be the same or very similar to the wheels on the 1982 MMS. But the HAL is a towed weapon. It can be moved, so let's put it in its mobile mode. First you have to fold this back leg up. It will swing back and it will wedge in so it will stay up, but the hinge doesn't stay in very well, so this thing does tend to pop out frequently, and that is a very frequently missing part. With the back leg folded up, the wheels now touch the ground. Let's turn our attention to the front legs. These two long front legs each have a loop, and they swing. You can swing them together and overlap those loops, and it will now fit on a universal tow hitch like the one on the Vamp. Let's go ahead and place the Howl's tow loop on the tow hitch for the vamp and there you go the set is complete looking at how the vamp and the howl were used separately in G.I. Joe media in the cartoon the vamp first appeared in the 1983 G.I. Joe miniseries a real American hero we first saw it in part three which is surprising considering how popular the vehicle was I would expect it to be in the first part or in all the parts the vamp was also animated for commercials. The Vamp didn't make many animated appearances, at least not in its original form. It was phased out because there were newer toys to sell. The HAL had a couple very brief appearances in the animated series. It had a total screen time of about five seconds. If you blink, you'll miss it. In the G.I. Joe comic book series published by Marvel Comics, they both appeared in issue number one. The HAL was featured on the inside cover. It incorrectly identified identifies Flash as the operator. In the comic book, the Vamp is the first real G.I. Joe vehicle we see when Clutch drives Hawk to G.I. Joe headquarters. Later in that issue, the Howl is towed by the Vamp. The perfect combo! The HAL is used to take out tanks, not aircraft. The VAMP was used far more frequently in the comic book than the HAL, but the HAL did have an odd moment in the spotlight in issue number three, when the Joes threw it down an elevator shaft to stop a giant robot. Even the ever-popular VAMP was phased out of the comic book in favor of newer vehicles, including the updated VAMP Mark II. Looking at the VAMP and HAL 2-pack overall, I've already reviewed the Vamp and the Howl separately, so you already know what I think of them. The Vamp is great. It's a very versatile vehicle. I like the original green. I like the gun turret more than the missiles that later releases came with. It's not perfect. A platform in the back would have been more useful than the gas cans. It could have had a gunner. The Howl looks fantastic, and it fills a role on the team. If G.I. Joe was going to have lasers, I'd rather they look like like this. It looks ready for field use. It isn't red or orange or purple. It is army green. The HAL is a little short on features though. Standing alone, it doesn't provide enough play value. Its main feature, its mobility, can only be used in conjunction with another vehicle. The combination of the VAMP and the HAL as a Sears exclusive didn't really give kids anything new. At best, it gave them a second chance at these toys if they didn't pick up the regular retail releases. The combination helps the HAL a little bit because it came with a vehicle to tow it. The more important thing to me is that it expands my G.I. Joe experience. I thought I was immersed in G.I. Joe as a child, but as an adult I have discovered so much more. I enjoy the nostalgia but I enjoy Discovery more. That was my review of the Sears exclusive Vamp HAL 2-pack. 
Thank you for five great years. I am not exaggerating when I say this has probably been the best five years of my life. I loved G.I. Joe when I was growing up. I never imagined I'd still be talking about it today. I never imagined I'd still be discovering new things about these old toys. If you recently found this channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. If you've been following this channel for a long time, thank you for sticking with me. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more G.I. Joe videos. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. Thanks to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you like the channel and you'd like to support the channel in that way, please check out Patreon. You can get some special perks and learn how to decode the secret messages you see in these videos. We've talked a lot about the creators of G.I. Joe and given them credit for creating a toy line that we still remember and talk about, this is about the fans. The fans have kept G.I. Joe alive when there are no toys on the shelves and no movies on the screens. And that's what this anniversary celebration is really about. Now I'm going to turn the video over to you. These are the messages you sent me for the anniversary. Thank you for participating. Let's keep it going for another five years. And in all that time, always remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Happy 5th anniversary, Hooded Cobra Commander 788. This little Cobra salute is for you. Hey, hey, Brian, I just wanted to say congratulations on five years doing your show. You've got a lot to be proud of. Five years of reviews, you've created Cobra Convergence, and a review of a big playset or vehicle every year. Wow, my hat's off to you, uh, figuratively speaking. It's been great seeing your channel grow and getting so many people involved in the G.I. Joe community. And you know what? Five years is just the beginning. Here's to the next five years. I'm sure we're all gonna have a lot of fun. And to commemorate this great occasion, I'll do you a great honor. Actually, get your name right. Congratulations, HCC788. Well, I hope you're enjoying yourself, and I'll see you very soon. And I remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Oh, hi! You caught me playing the G.I. Joe song perfectly on this violin. Uh, my name is Chris, and I host the YouTube show Comic Tropes, where I review comic books every week. And I just wanted to take a moment to say to Hooded Cobra Commander 788, or Hoodie Coco, as I like to call you, uh, thank you so much for not just producing a weekly amazing YouTube show, but also for being such a great friend and sounding board for me, because uh, I also do YouTube. And I just want to say you have given me not just entertainment, but you've helped me remember uh, a lot of nostalgia for something that I loved growing up, and uh, you've reignited a lot of my passion for G.I. Joe. You produce a fantastic show. Here's to five more years. This is Beachhead reporting for G.I. Joeberg. Congrats on the first five years, HCC, and thanks for bringing this Joe community together. Yo, Joe! Now drop and give me 20! Hey, HCC788, congratulations on reaching five years on YouTube. It's been a long and sometimes rough road. I know how it can be, but your hard work and dedication really shows in the video content that you produce. So congratulations again, and here's to at least another five more. Hey, B, uh, congratulations on five years. That is a milestone and a half. Uh, I could only wish to be half as good as you in five years. Uh, that, gosh, five years, man. Is I remember joining your channel when you're barely a year into it. So... Man, the progress you've made is just phenomenal. I know YouTube channels are a work in progress, but man, I think you, you got it locked. 
I really do. Congratulations again. It has been a pleasure working with you and knowing you. And I wish you many, many happy years in the future. And thank you for getting me interested in collecting toys again. That has been a big bonus in my life. So all because of you, buddy. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Happy 5th anniversary, Hooded Cobra Commander 788. Man, you have a long name. Wow, five years on YouTube. Congratulations, Hooded Cobra Commander 788. That is a huge accomplishment. I love your channel, and it's been awesome getting to know you in real life as well as online. Keep up the good work. The reviews are awesome, and I put together a little something special for you just for this. Happy anniversary. Hoodie Coco, happy anniversary, Hoodie Coco, happy anniversary, Hoodie Coco, happy anniversary to you. B, I'll keep this short and sweet, but I am so, so proud of everything you've done both on your channel and how you've overcome things in your private life as well. I think you're an amazing guy and I just really, really want to be there with you when you go from strength to strength to strength over the, again, another five years and I'm sure everything is going to be even more awesome than it already is. Um, I love you, bruv. Look after yourself. Here's to the next five years. God bless. Hello, this is Shabu RU from Codename New202. I wanted to wish HCC788 a very happy fifth anniversary. Much deserved. There is no one that has given so selflessly to the community. If you think about it, everyone, this man is a husband, a father, a professional, takes care of his house, and then he still makes time to deliver, to bring to us our childhood back. There is something about that that is, I mean, it's beyond explanation. My grandfather, before he passed, told me that you should always associate yourself with individuals that bring out that have good qualities and bring out the best in you. I'm gonna say something personal. ACC 788 came into my life in a very dark time. I was a victim of a hate crime at work. Despite my father serving in the Marines, despite my service, I came back and I was a victim of a hate crime. I was suffering from PTSD and I would watch Form BX25 and, and HCC. Those guys, you know, I wrote to Brian and he wrote back and he encouraged me, we need to hear your voice. You're part of us. And that's, that's the beauty of HCC 78. Everybody is welcome. Everybody's a part of this. So thank you, HCC 788, for being a beacon in our community and hopefully five more years. I wonder what Timmer is up to. Congratulations to my good friend Hooded Cobra Commander 788. I've had the privilege of watching your channel grow for many years and look forward to what the future holds for you. Congratulations and yo Joe. Have five year anniversary HCC 788. You're awesome. Hey Hoodie, it's Rezekai. I just wanted to chime in on your five year anniversary video and thank you for all the hard work and effort you've been doing for the, the G.I. Joe community. I'm looking forward to five more years of your great reviews and great comedy. Please don't lose that aspect of it. Um, and because of you, I did buy my first action figure in 30 years the other day. Um, welcome to the addiction indeed. 
Um, hopefully, you know, we'll have a great next five years. Thanks a lot. It's the Snake Eyes and Chuckles Show, starring Snake Eyes and Chuckles. Special guests, Alan Alda, Mr. T, and Zanzibar. And now, here's Snake Eyes. Okay, good evening folks, it's great to see you all here. Before we bring out our first guest tonight, we have a special announcement. I'd like to congratulate our friend Hooded Cobra Commander 788 on five years of producing high quality YouTube videos reviewing vintage real American hero G.I. Joe action figures. Let's give him a big hand and warm congratulations folks. Congratulations Hoodie, we love your show. Hey Hoodie Coco, Moto Viper here on location my next photo shoot I just wanted to wish you happy congratulations on five years of content you guys are doing great you're amazing keep it up photo viper out Hey, Hooded Cobra Commander, this is Grunt, and I'm just going to tell you that I'm not going to wish you a happy five-year anniversary. I'm just playing. It's Sartan. Happy five-year anniversary, Hooded Cobra Commander. Ha 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 ha. Wow, it... Five years is a long time to keep a YouTube channel going. Um, I've been watching you for like four, and I uh, Patreon right away, and... Um, holler at you at occasion. Um, thanks for putting all the effort into it for the last five years. And, you know, hopefully you can take as long, <laughs> take as long as you want finishing up the rest. I'll continue to watch. Um, again, happy anniversary, Brian. And, um, thank you again for all that you do. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve Insolaco, also known as Armor Magnus. I want to give a huge shout out and congratulations to Hooded Cobra Commander 788 on your five year anniversary. What an amazing accomplishment. I'm very excited for your success and the success of the channel. And I want to thank you for the great content that you provide on a weekly basis and your commitment to the Joe community. I also want to thank you for your inspiration. Because of you, I decided to start my own YouTube channel where I review the things that I'm passionate about, G.I. Joe and Transformers. So thank you for your inspiration. Again, congratulations on your success. I'm very excited for you, and I'm very excited to see what Hooded Cover Commander 788 has in store over the next five years. Yo, Joe! Happy 5th anniversary to the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 show. It has been a great 5 years and I hope he keeps on rolling them out.
What's up, Hoodie? Eric Eman from the great north woods of Wisconsin, here to say congratulations on five years of your channel, during which you, with your unique style and wit and insight, have helped to keep G.I. Joe alive for fans like me. So I just want to express my gratitude for your hard work and dedication, because you're an important part of the G.I. Joe community, and I want to wish you many more years to come of even greater success. But remember, only HCC 788 is HCC 788. Hey HCC, uh, happy anniversary, man! Five years—that's that's amazing. Um, just wanted to pop on real quick, say thank you for all the great reviews, uh, the the toys we all know and love, you know. Um, and it, it's always a lot of fun watching you review. Anyway, uh, looking forward to the next five years. I'm sure it'll only get better and better. Thank you for inviting everybody to celebrate with you, um, and yo Joe. Hey, uh, by the way, that uh, special project is almost done. It'll be to you soon. Thanks. Happy anniversary. Four years, huh? That hooded cobra commander has done it again again. I shall inform Lord Serpentor, but first, I will make a video to congratulate him on his channel's anniversary. Let me know when we're ready. Oh, uh, sir, we're already recording. What? Oh, I will deal with you later. Thank you so much, Cooted Cobra Commander, for the great content and amazing work and contribution to the G.I. Joe community. Hey, Hoodie Cobra Commander 788. I uh, just wanted to know, I just started watching your stuff. I really enjoy it. It's uh, made me dig out some of my old G.I. Joes and repaired some of the ones that have dry rotted. Uh, here, good congratulations on five years. Here's to five more years. I look forward to seeing what you review next. And remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. But more importantly... Hello, Hooded Cobra Commander. Marcel here from the Netherlands. And I just want to congratulate you with five years of trans uh, uh, G.I. Joe reviews. And I love watching you. I, I love uh, your live uh, audience, you and it every review every live stream you do is a joy for me i really i really must sit down and watch everything you make so keep on the good work and from the netherlands till next time Wow, I can't believe that HCC 788 has gone for five years. Awesome. You have inspired me to make my own channel and buy the figures and vehicles that I reckon I should do. Oh, fuck. Hey, HCC. Daryl Beck coming at you from my G.I. Joe toy room and awesome Spokane, Washington. Just wanted to give you a quick message to say congratulations on five years. That's totally sweet. Thanks for all the awesome toy reviews and funny moments and just help me make the G.I. Joe collecting community as awesome as it could possibly be. Here's to another five years. And as always, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Yo, Joe! Go. Hey, Goody Coco. Happy five years. Yo, Joe! Congratulations on five years of inspiring videos, Hooded Cover Commander. Hello from the top of an ancient Irish round tower attached to St Canis Cathedral in Kilkenny, Ireland, where I'm on vacation for a few days, just looking at the sights. Uh, and this is just a quick video to say congratulations to Brian for running a fantastic YouTube channel. Congratulations on the five year anniversary. And he's looking forward to the next five years, which I'm sure will be just as great. Oh, bro.
Greetings to HC788 and the rest of the G.I. Joe community. I am Brandon Knight, and I want to greet you on this special day. Today is the five-year anniversary of this channel with HCC788 as its creator. Today we have been on a great journey and many adventures with this channel and making new friends along the way. So hopefully we will keep continuing these great adventures and for many more years to come. I can't wait for the next anniversaries to come up in the near future and see how far we've come and all the more friends we keep meeting. We have all shown how much we've loved this toy line, comic series, and cartoon series. So thanks to HC7 and 8 for helping us show our love and appreciation for G.I. Joe. And remember, Joe Fest is coming up and I hope I see you all there and get to meet you for the very first time. So let's all appreciate today as the five year anniversary with HTC 788. And remember, G.I. Joe is only G.I. Joe. Yo, Joe! Yo, check it out, man. Yeah. Storm Shadow and Big Ben aren't the only ones joining the ultimate action team. In the name of the Father, Son of a Gun, Flint, Duke, and the General Hawk, I was hired by them and was told to get rid of the padlock, get it all clean, cut, tan up. Technically, I am a mercenary for hire, slash military advisor, filling in today for your senior drill instructor. Formerly an international terrorist, Guantanamo Bay can't handle this. Mercenary poetry as good as it gets. Currently wanted for crowns on three continents. I'm about to be exonerated by the good old USA because some guys get all the bricks. We all love the American cheese on the Whopper, American apple pie after supper, gambling on football and American hustle, classic cars, American muscle, American beauties, but I ain't no sucker. Hey, the M4 ride passing your seatbelt buckles. And I'm a modest man, I don't like to brag, but we all about that business, so I stay on top of that like a cherry on the ice cream sundae. Enjoyed along with the commander's review and rave all about it on the Monday. And the same don't go a little something like you don't know G.I. Joe till you watch this show. Congratulations on five years, HCC 788, and keep up the good videos. Happy fifth anniversary, Hooded Cover Commander. Happy fifth anniversary, Hooded Cover Commander. We enjoy your videos quite a lot. You helped us put this flag together. Uh -huh. A, what's your favorite ho Hooded Cover Commander video? Tomahawk. Why the Tomahawk? Because it's my favorite vehicle and I love lifting it. Excellent. Happy anniversary, sir. See from Ryan and Dylan. Hi. We wanted to wish you a happy five year anniversary and we hope you many, many more years of great programming on HC788. Thanks. Keep it Hey HCC, here's for another five years. Na zdrowie. Hey there, Brian. It's a little awkward for me since I'm not used to this stuff, I guess. But happy anniversary stuff. And look, there's my cousin. Say hello to the camera. And again, happy anniversary in a way. Thanks for entertaining me in a way, and I'm. Uh, should have scripted this honestly. Sorry about that. Happy anniversary still. Also, no, it's not really Joe, but I also like shiny things like you. Eh. Happy anniversary. Hello, everybody. Hebro77 here, and I'm here to wish Hooded Cobra Commander 7888 a very happy five year anniversary. I can't believe it's been five years. Well, I'll tell you what, brother. We're all pulling for you. We love you. And you're a great exit to the G.I. Joe community. Did I say accent or exit? Anyway, keep up the good work. And we're looking forward to another five years of excellent action figure and comic book reviews. So to every, from everyone here at the Hero Channel, thanks for all that you've done. And remember, only Hooded Cobra Commander is Hooded Cobra Commander. Good night, everybody.
So I would just like to say to my friend Hoodie, congratulations on the five years. That's great. And keep up the great work. Ah, all right. Uh, dinner, honey. <laughs> it's your very favorite. Strawberry shortcake. Again. It's your very favorite. Yes, yes it is. Oh, so I see your friend Blueberry Muffin was over. Half oh, my life. Welcome to the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 channel and welcome to my first ever G.I. Joe action figure review. We are going to be reviewing Breaker today. Uh, but before I get started, I did want to say a few words. Um, first of all, there are other G.I. Joe action figure reviewers on YouTube and of course they'll do a much better job than, uh, than I will. They're much more experienced collectors than I am. Uh, but it looks like fun and I've wanted to do it for a while so today I thought I'd give it a spin. 